Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate you guys coming and uh, joining me for this uh, session. Uh, we're going to spend uh, 10 sessions together. Uh, Norm and Chad have been kind enough to uh, bring me in. I'm going to share with you guys the 10 best sessions to help you guys uh, hyper jump and kick your businesses into stream here. Uh, week one, we're going to start off with just a plan. Um, agents aim for nothing and hit it with incredibly accuracy. So I'm going to start with you guys. I know it seems uh, a bit, some of you may elementary or that, but I'm going to just start off with basically giving you the basis and the foundation and a session today on how to uh, strategically look at your business and how to plan your business moving forward. Just so you know, the sessions are recorded each week. Uh, I will send the recordings after to Chad to share with you guys. Uh, any of the items that you see on the screen, Chad has uh, emails for it to share with you as well. So the tools that I'm showing and sharing today uh, will be uh, sent out to you guys via email after each of the week and after each of the sessions. So uh, grab a pen and paper if you would like to take notes uh, and keep record of what we're covering each week. But with that said, I'm going to just start with uh, with the fundamentals of business and the business planning strategies and just what I do with uh, all my coaching clients. So those of you that we've not spent time together, my name is Wade Webb. Uh, I am the broker owner of Royal Page in Kelowna, British Columbia. Uh, it has been a beautiful Alberta weekend here in Kelowna. Uh, we have had winter since November, just like you guys. So there's nothing special about the Okanagan and don't come here anytime soon because it's still minus six. Uh, and my business career started with uh, uh, with my dad, much like Chad and Norm. My dad and I were working together for the first year, years of my career. I started, believe it or not, 29 years ago. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, I was studying to be a music high school band teacher. Got a job in Saskatchewan. I'm not a, I'm not joking. It's Saskatchewan door to door selling encyclopedias for the summer. Uh, did very, very well, sold encyclopedia, set of books back in uh, in 1992, I guess it would have been, uh, for $1,999.99. I knocked on 300 doors a night. I've been told where to go and how to get there more times than you can even imagine in this room. And uh, from that experience, I realized that I had loved sales, loved this business, called my dad from a locust-infested uh phone booth in Kindersley, Saskatchewan and said to him, tell mom, I'm real sorry. I'm not going to be a high school band teacher. I'm getting my real estate license and I'm getting into the business when I was the ripe old age of 21, not even owning a house, not even knowing what the heck I was doing. I got my license, got started and uh, the rest is history. Bought the brokerage uh, with Francis in 2004 by 33 hit chairman's club. Uh, back then I thought I was the most successful human being because, uh, I was on pace for a million dollars, but that same year I was burned out. I was probably nearly 400 pounds and uh, my wife was leaving me and taking my three children. So uh, I had a decision to make in 2004. So instead of uh, uh, continuing on trying to make millions and millions of dollars, I bought the brokerage and I started my coaching, training and teaching career from there. It's not pretty how I ended up buying a brokerage, but my wife and I are celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary this October. And my three children are all in university and studying school and doing well. And we're all still one big happy family. So there's uh, there's the story in my background. Uh, I coach for uh, different coaching companies and for myself for the number of years now. And uh, it's just my way of one way of being able to give back to this industry. It's a phenomenal business, a phenomenal career. Love real estate. My wife says, I wish I was a Montreal Canadian or a real estate deal because you love them more than anything else in the world. Go Habs go, maybe next season. And uh, so with that said, that's a little bit about me. And so I talk to a lot of agents across the United States and across Canada every single day. And what I'm going to share with you guys the next 10 weeks is basically what's working, what's happening. They're all street tested. They're all street proven strategies and things like that. Uh, we came from a crazy market here in BC. So I've been there, done that. Uh, I can only imagine how much fun you guys are having with no inventory, multiple offers, blah, blah, blah. But I have str strategies and I have ways in which you guys can navigate the market and navigate what's going on. Uh, with that said, I'll give you a little bit of background here in Kelowna. Uh, count your lucky blessing stars. There was 71 transactions last week for 1,250 realtors. Just last week, 71. So there's a few uh, uh, realtors 
that it's like musical chairs, Chad. Uh, the music was rocking. There was plenty of chairs. Everything was rolling and rocking and rolling in that. And then all of a sudden the music stopped and there wasn't enough chairs and boom, the reality set in. The good news is that we're in a professional's market and there's no turkeys flying in the eye of a hurricane in 2023 here in Kelowna. Uh, it's serious. It's back to fundamentals and back to business. And uh, so it's an interesting time for us here in BC and in Ontario. Uh, but one thing I can say is there's little or no inventory across the country even in the United States and Canada, everybody I coach, inventory is tight, inventory is low, and that seems to be the common denominator. So we're going to focus on that and help you get some more leads and some more business and some more inventory, and we'll focus on that. So first things first, I'm going to just start with planning for success. So one of my favorite reads is a book called The Oz Principle, like The Wizard of Oz. And in this book, it has this visual here where you'll see in the world, there's this what we call the invisible line, everybody. And everybody's heard of the Pareto theory, the Pareto theory, the 80-20 rule, uh, all of those different uh, laws of averages and that. And this is an example of that showing the invisible line. And what I want to share with you guys is all the years and the 29 years that I've been in this business and the coaching and all the different clientele and all the people that I work for and all the audiences I've shared with, there is one common thing and there's one common thing that I find with all successful people, they take the ideas from anything they attend, anything they learn, and they implement and execute. Pure and simple, you guys are not short of ideas. What we're short of is implementation and execution. Uh, there's three letters on my office door. They say TSW. When people come into my office, they ask me TSW, and I'm like, yep, this stuff works. And so it isn't... Uh, it isn't rocket science, but at the end of the day, you have to take what you're going to learn. And I'm going to ask you to promise yourselves, not promise myself or Chad or, or, or Norm or anybody in the room. I just want you to promise yourself that whatever you take away each and every week, you will implement and execute something. Implement, execute something. So if you look at this line, you look at this diagram, you'll see the line here where the, the 20 play, guys, and the 20% live above the line, what we'll call above the line. And my poor children, Jude, Goldie, and Leah, uh, have been having this uh, analogy beaten into them as a, as a young children. And that, that basically I always ask them, hey, are we playing above the line or are we playing below the line? We're below the line. Where do we play in the house? We play above the line. So at the end of the day, they take action. The 20% acts on it and implements and executes. They are solution providers and they're people that are able to take their clients and provide solutions for their challenges and their, and their difficulties they're having. They own their stuff. Top producers ask themselves three questions. You can write these questions down. What did I learn? What am I going to do different? What's next? Top producers ask themselves every time they hit a challenge, every time they hit a pitfall, because it's not all rainbows, unicorns, and everything else. Look at me in 2004. Not pretty, huge, going to die from a heart attack, going to lose my family and everything else and that. But the day before that, I thought I was the most successful real estate agent I know. Pfft, nope. Reality check. And at the end of the day, what did you learn? What are you going to do different? And what is next? And they have a clear vision of what it is that they they want and what it is they're their what their real estate business is a vehicle for, what they're going to provide it for. And then we'll talk about that in a few in a few more minutes. The below the line, they're always the victim. You'll see the victor and the victim. And then the people are either in the state of blame, denial, excuse, helplessness. Um, we know that we've met them all or sometimes we've been around those type of people in that. And you've just got to be able to remind yourself where we play above that line and where we play below that line. And it's my favorite analogy. So for the next 10 sessions, guys, I'm going to ask everybody in this program and ask yourselves and promise yourselves that you're going to implement and execute and you're going to play above the line and not play below the line. All right. With that said, let's move on to the, the questions I'm going to open with our with our sessions together. So. A lot of times we've experienced the last two years, an unprecedented time in the market, an unprecedented time in this world. And I and, and, and over and over again, I'll see two common themes that have come out of the last, say, pandemic years. OK, there are agents who are stuck and having a tough time and not a judgment or guilt or anything like that. They're having a tough time with social anxiety. They're having a tough time of getting you know, their pants on and getting out of bed and going out and seeing people. We're so used to being home and being locked down and et cetera, et cetera. And they're just having a tough time just getting out and about. And we do out and about. That's what we do for a living in this business. And we do out and about. 
The second thing I've seen a common theme is all the big hitters, all the most successful people that I coach. And I'm talking million dollar plus pro producers. They all burned out. They all hated themselves. They hated the industry. They hated their clients. They hated their house. They hated their spouse. It was like a cat in a hat novel and that, and everybody tended to either fall into one category where they're burned out and done and they were just rolling at high, high speeds and high levels and that, or they ended up just being stuck and caught and being locked down and they're not able to be able to get out of that funk. So I'm going to ask you these questions and you can ask these questions to yourself after the session is, is that, you know, number one, who's stuck and who's burned out? Number two, what's causing you to hit this wall? What's caused you to hit a wall or what's caused you to hitting a wall? What's really stopping you right now? Think about this. What's really stopping you right now? And you can figure out what's stopping you right now by asking yourself, like, what are your behavior pa patterns? Like, what are you doing every single day? What are your behavior patterns? And look at those patterns and look at them. Are they conducive to what you want and what you want to accomplish? Or are they conducive to where you're at and where you're sitting right now? Next question is look at your activities. You know, what am I implementing? What am I executing? Write this down. Who am I seeing and who am I being seen by? It's a big thing. Who am I seeing and who am I being seen by? And, and just look at those activities. Look at the things that you're thinking about most. What are your behavioral patterns and that? That's probably going to be the root of what's stopping you and what's holding you back. So why am I not doing what I need to do? Why am I not doing what I want to do? If your why is big enough, the how figures it out. I'm sure you've heard this over and over again. Your why needs to be big enough and then your why will be big enough and your how will figure itself out. And what do I need to do and what I know I need to do and why am I not doing that? What's the little voice in your head? There's a book I'll give you a, a great book called The Little Voice Mastery, Little Voice Mastery. And it's a, just a book about talking about the little voice where the little voice wins most of the time in most of our heads. It's the one that says, oh, you're not you know, like successful enough. Oh, they'll never list with you. Oh, you're just, that's too high priced. Oh, that's too low priced. The voice that's going in your head telling you all of those lies that's going on in your life and that and is the voice winning or are you winning over the voice and that it's written by a guy by the name of Blair Singer and it's called Little Voice Mastery Blair Singer highly recommended it's a good read but just having that awareness of your voice and having awareness of what's going on and what's being said and what what you're hearing and what you're telling yourself is an incredible uh, thing that you have to take care of and be able to take it and crush it and stop it and switch it and shift so why am I not open or aware to what's going on with myself? Why am I choosing not to take action? And what do I need to choose differently? What do I need to choose differently? So, you know, it's what you think about most. It's what your uh, your behavioral patterns and that. You, if you need to shake things up, this is the opportunity to do that. Uh, if you're rocking and rolling, make sure that you're finding some balance and some pace because it's overrated getting divorced and having a heart attack. Trust me, I know. Um, and so it's just that fine line and you have to decide what is the why behind what you do. I can tell you firsthand that after 30 years, I've realized that there's one thing that gives me the most joy. That is teaching what I do. But more importantly, real estate has become a vehicle for me to finance the cool things with the cool people in my life. How many people show hands in the room is how many people enjoy financing cool things with the cool people in their life? How many people get the most joy from that, right? So for me, that's my why and that's my joy. For you, it'll be different. For some of you, it'll be the same. But the one thing you have to do is you have to have a vision. So I know that this is kind of, uh, uh, for some of you, I'm not a crafts and arts and crafts kind of guy, Wade, or a gal, um, but this is kind of weird. But I read a book and I have a copy of it right here years and years ago from a mentor of mine called The Power of Focus. And it just talks about what you see and what you read and what you hear and what you watch and what you believe and what you say in that. And it just talks about that, that vision and that clear thing. And so I'm going to tell you that I live what I teach. I stare at two of my crafts boards right here by my desk and by my phone every single day. There are images there that remind me of what I want to do and who I want to do it with and the why and what gets me out of bed. And if I take care of people, the cash will take care of itself. If you take care of people, the cash will take care of itself. And so you're in the business of taking care of people and serving people, but you have to clearly understand what it is and what it is your vision is. So anybody in the room have a vision board or do a vision board or put one together on a regular basis? 
There are a few of you. Perfect. And and don't hesitate to put it somewhere where it's always constantly visible on your phone, on your screen share, on your bathroom mirror, beside your desk and that. But you have to, I'm going to challenge you all, if you haven't, or it's time to upgrade it, is create a vision board. So, you know, what are the things, what's my why? What gives you the biggest or the greatest joy, right? Who gives me that greatest joy? Uh, what am I doing and, and when, when am I most happy and what am I doing when I am most happy and what fills me and what pours into me and what invigorates me, and what excites me. Uh, you know, in the past, when I started in the business, I was in my 20s and I thought being the big man on campus and winning in the office, that was what was driving me was to be one of the best in the office. In 1997, I was humbled and great enough to, uh, to be number one in our office in Penticton. And uh, then I'm like, oh, wow, well, now that I did that, well, there's got to be more to this. And then I thought, well, you know, making a million bucks. And then I was having a heart attack and my wife was taking my three children, leaving me. And I'm like, oh, wow, that was overrated. That wasn't cool. And then I just realized that the high and the energy and the joy that I get is just doing cool things with the cool people in my life. And, uh, and, I, and I do it regularly and I do it consistently. When I was selling and, and in this business, guys, I worked and I found that my my capacity was a six week time period. So I'm going to challenge some of you in the room is, is that that I worked uh, six days a week, took the seventh day off each week for six consecutive weeks, and then planned something and took every sixth week off. Uh, one of my chairman's club clients, coaching clients said, I couldn't do that weight. I couldn't take that much time off, take every sixth week off. Um, two years ago, he took every sixth week off, uh, only worked six days and made more money that year than he had ever made in his past career and took more time off than that. And actually his wife came to me, Bonnie, and said, you know what, Wade, thanks for challenging him. Thanks for uh, reminding him of what gives him joy and what drives him and what feeds him because he took more time off. And you think about this, guys, what happens just before you leave and before you're getting out and going away on vacation? You guys get busy. You know, the calls come in, things happen. You get a listing call, you get a, a deal going on. You always get busy. And then if you don't leave for too long of a period, you know, four to seven days, then things are still rolling in momentum and you just needed time to fill yourself up to get back on pace and to get back up to speed and to be able to do that. And, and, and you don't lose that momentum, but you're, you're reloading. You can write this comment down and I'm a firm, firm believer. If you haven't read this book, you can read this book. But the term is this, is I think that energy management is far more important than time management. Think about this. Energy management is far more important than time management. You can have all the time in the world, but if you're not healthy mentally, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually in that, you can have all this time and everything else in that, but you don't have anything and no, no reason to even go or the energy or the wow or anything to do and to move and to, to act and to, to put yourself in place. So I'm a firm believer that, you know, energy management and resourcing, when you look at Olympic athletes, when you look at people that are elite, they're very cognizant and very aware of their energy and they're very aware of their pace and their capacity and their focus that they know what it is that the, the vehicle which drives them and what they want from it. And they know that they're pacing themselves and they're, and they're, and they're managing their pace in that. Uh, I was listening to uh, John Herdman, the coach of the Canadian uh, women and men's coach soccer team. And John said he has the rule of 85, the rule of 85. And you can write this down. The rule of 85 with John is, is that he asks every player to play at 85% of their best every single time, whether in practice, when they're on, whenever they're off the field and that. He said they're always preparing themselves so that every day they're at 85%. He said 100% is just unrealistic because, you know, we all have our days, life happens, shit happens, whatever you want to call it. And at the end of the day, you've got to realize that, you know, 85% is pretty dang good. And if you can do that consistently, so John would say, when we showed up to a, a place where the field sucked or it's too cold or this or that, or they are jet lagged and that, he said, all my players were working every day to play at 85%. And he said, I didn't expect excellence. I just expected 85 from him. And he turned a women and a men's soccer team around and made us contenders in a World Cup in a soccer field. And I think the same goes for us in real estate, guys, is that if you can consistently find your 85% and keep it at that level, when it comes time to perform for a listing or to close a buyer or to get you know a deal done or to win something in a multiple, you're always programmed yourself and always paced yourself and energized yourself to play at 85%. So I'm going to challenge you to look at that 85%, look at that energy management and that focus 
and also just really clearly know what it is that gives you joy, what it fires you up, what what is your why in that? I know that most people are like, oh, this sounds you know so airy fairy in that. Trust me, if Chad Chad knows me well, if you know me well, I'm not that airy fairy kind of guy, but it's crazy. When I read this book. I was with my wife and we were on a trip and that, and I wrote down all these things that I wanted to accomplish in the next year on a, on a cocktail napkin. I stuck that napkin on my fridge because uh, somebody 400 pounds goes to a fridge frequently, you can imagine. And so I constantly saw that cocktail napkin on the fridge every single day. And I wrote down those things. And then the crazy, crazy thing you find after six, eight, 12 months, guess what? Most of those things on that cocktail napkin, check, 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 check. And time and time again, most of these things on my boards and that, you start to go check, check, check. And so you have to constantly know what it is that's driving you. Success, the plaques, it was driving me early. Making the money, having the staff, all of that, it was driving me early. Having my friends, having my family, being able to finance any experience with any cool person in my life, that's what drives me to do that and to work and to continue to, to help people. Because if I help them get what they need, they're going to help me get what I need in my in my life, in my business. And, that, and that's my pure focus and my, my pure why and my joy. Uh, I had the gift of being able to, and I don't share this stories. Please don't take it that I'm bragging or flexing on anybody right now. I'm just telling you that that I live what I teach and and take my daughter away. I take each of my children to an individual holiday, just one-on-one -on -one with each of them. I take my wife away regularly and that, you know, travel and experiences and fun and doing stuff like that is, is what's driving me and what gives me the most joy in that. And I clearly know that after all these years, it is my why and it's my Northern star. And it's what, what drives me to get out of bed and to go to work and come in the office at five thirty, six o'clock in the morning I coach all my coaching clients at 5, 6, 7 a.m. that are out in Eastern Canada, Eastern States and that. Yes, 5 a.m., 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock comes twice in, in one day for some of you in the room. Uh, I know some of you may find that hard to believe, but it does come at that. Uh, and I'm not bragging or flexing on there. I just want to be able to finance the cool things for the cool people in my life because that's what gives me joy. And I want to go out feeling like I never miss anything and I've got all my things in my bucket list checked off. So I'm going to challenge you guys to figure out what it is that's stuck in you and get unstuck if that's a proper word. Clear vision, clear energy management, implement, execute, live above the line for the next 10 weeks, not below that line and promise yourselves that you want to change things up. You want to get unstuck. You want to get out there. You want to be able to see people and interact with people. You know, I get it. People do suck, right? I mean, oh, I love houses. That's great. You'll be bored of them after 29 years. If you've been in this business long enough, every house seems to be the same. Don't get me wrong. And that, no, I love people. Well, if you've been in this business long enough, you'll hate people too sooner or later. Like you have to have times and momentums where like, if you want to, you know, you got to understand that, that there's going to be some ups and downs and things like that. And you got to reload, refresh and, and regroup and make sure that you pace yourself and make sure that you keep your energy up. And so that you can deliver and you can play at 85 when it's time to play at 85%. All right. So first things Wait. first. Yeah, please, Chad. Just, can you blow up your screen? We have the... Uh... Yeah, too small? Yeah. Done. I think we're not on slideshow on our end. We're just on... There we go. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no worries. And you'll get the slides, everyone, and you'll get the uh, you'll get the recordings in that too, Chad, after that with all the questions and all the visuals and the vision boards and all that for sure. So one thing first in my business plan when I start with anybody and I recommend all of you doing this, I was just in Nanaimo, BC, guys, and, and I was doing a seg segment with them in uh, about a month ago and was there. And I find this common is, is that I can ask the question in the room. Can anybody tell me what the number one sub area or neighborhood that had the most listings and most sales in 2022 was in Red Deer? Perfect. Perfect. I got the, I get the exact same answer everywhere I go. So I just want to change screens here, Chad, and I want to show you guys something. So you folks need to understand that you're business owners and it makes sense that you should be strategic at knowing what your market is in that. So I start off by looking at the market analysis. So I took about an hour before I went out to Nanaimo and I apologize, Chad, should I should have got your MLS system and I should have got your stats and that. But folks, what I did in Nanaimo in less than an hour was basically put a strategic plan together for them and everybody in the room. And you can do the same. And Chad, I'm going to send you this template and you can do the same for Red Deer guys. 
But basically what we looked at is I wanted to figure out what the trends were for single family dwellings, right? And look at the opportunities in that. So looking at the expiry rates, there was an incredible high expiry rate in uh, Nanaimo, which was an opportunity I looked at. The prices were coming down, which means there's an opportunity because now people can get in the market and there'll be some opportunity there. I looked at the condo market and the average price was up tremendously for year over year. So there's another opportunity because single family was declining, but ironically, condos were rising in Nanaimo. I looked at what was trending with townhomes and different marketplaces and studying the market folks and that and being able to see where the product types are and where the opportunities are and what are things trending. If you're gonna call yourself a real estate professional, you need to know the numbers, the basic numbers, you know, basically what are listings doing? What are sales doing? What's the list to sell doing? What's the average price doing? What's the list to sell? What's the days on market? What's the expiry rate? What's trending in all property types and all product types in your marketplace? And then share that information and set yourself apart from most individuals. The one that I found interesting, Chad, was as I went into the Nanaimo office and I found their top five sub areas that had the most sales. Then I asked everybody in the room, is there anybody geo farming any of these neighborhoods? Crickets, crickets. So you don't even know where the top five sales areas are and agents in Nanaimo, and there's lots of them there, weren't even marketing or geo farming or working the top five neighborhoods in their areas. And then they also didn't know the worst or the lowest producing ones, right? Where the lowest sales numbers were and the lowest listing numbers are. So take time to see what these statistics are doing in your marketplace and take this, this template and create this template. Guys, and then you got yourself a report that you can share on TikTok or Twitter or TwitFace or whatever platform you're going to use in that and share some content and actually look like you know what you're talking about and trending and what's going on in that. And you know what? The, like what buyer wouldn't want to know what the best neighborhoods are for last year? What buyer wouldn't want to know what the slowest ones are? You got to be careful not to say the worst in case you live in that neighborhood, right? But what are the slowest areas and that? And also now I know what areas to geofarm and not to geofarm moving forward in the area. Then the next thing I studied was just quickly and in less than an hour, I looked at their price ranges, where their most active price ranges, where their sweep spots are. Now, I know that these are crazy numbers for Red Deer, but Red Deer is probably getting there sooner or later. But their price ranges were, were specific. In Kelowna, our sweet spot is 1 to 1.5. In and, and Nanaimo, it was 1 million in that 1 million range, right? And then 8 to 9, 7 to 8, 9 to million, 6 to 7. Those were the top price ranges. So now I know what the best neighborhoods to farm are. Now I know what the best price ranges are for sales and for listings. Now I've got a better understanding of being more targeted. Then I took the two and put them together, Chad. So I put the neighborhoods and the price ranges and then got the top price and neighborhood matchings on this section here. And now you've got a strategy. Now you've got a plan. Now you've got an idea of where you want to focus your marketing, your efforts, your 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 lead gen, anything like that. And you know where you want to sell your clients and tell your clients based on the statistics and based on the numbers and that that you know. Then I looked at, this is an interesting stat where we're seeing BC where prices are correcting dramatically in that, but it showed that in the home price index is HPI in single family, it, the, nobody's focusing on in BC what the prices are still up still. So crazy enough, five years ago, if you bought a house in Nanaimo, you're still up 40% from price. 36 months ago, you're up 34%. 12 months ago, you're up 9%. But all we do is talk about doom and gloom, but we don't focus on how much the properties are still up from previous years and promoting that information. So here's the single family analysis. And you guys should study, you know, what product type is, is outperforming each product type? What neighborhoods, what price ranges have all of that? Would you agree, show of hands, that that would be pretty important for information for you to be able to strategically figure out where you're going to do your business this year, right? And agents, like, you have to understand, Francis, my business partner, he's the numbers guy. Like, there's a joke in our office that Wade doesn't read the financial statements, but I've learned that studying the statements and studying the stats and studying the information, it leaves clues. History leaves clues. Data leaves clues, clues. the stats leave clues, you guys. And those clues are available for you for your businesses and for your strategic planning. So look at the market, study the market and see where it is and see where it's going from. And make sure that you have a plan and, and, and use the data to strategically create your plan. And like everybody in Nanaimo, nobody's farming the best areas in Nanaimo. And I'm guessing in Red Deer, 
that may be the same true here and that in your room in your particular market, but we'll see. That's the first thing you do from your business and studying the market and studying the numbers and all of the things I want you to study. They're all listed here in your booklets. Okay, guys. Next thing I want you to do is study your own business. So if you're not somebody, if, if you're a seasoned pro, this is the reason why you want to study your business. You want to study your business on what's working, where it's coming from. Stop doing what's not working and keep doubling down on what's working for you, right? What are your price ranges? What are your product types? What are your demographics? Who are the type of people that you're frequently dealing with? What are your buyer types? You know, what are your months on sales? What are your days on market in that? So imagine when you study your statistics and then you match them with the average statistics in your marketplace and your board area. So Chad, what you'll probably have to do is help people to find out what the stats are from the marketplace. But here's one of the best experience pieces that I have, guys, that uh, that you can create for yourself from a from a listing strategies perspective. Look at the statistics. So this is a guy I coach in Vernon here. And this is Dan Reinhardt. I've been coaching him for a number of years. And Dan studied what his numbers were. He studied what his list to sell price ratio was for his sellers. He studied what his days on markets were. He studied what his listings taken versus listings sold. And then he took the average in the board area and created the statistic marketing piece. And let me ask you this. Does a seller care about anything more than how much you can net them more than an average realtor in your town? How many days you can do it quicker? with no mistakes and what's your listings taken versus listing sold? Do you list homes or do you sell homes? Because there's a difference. Are you a realtor that lists homes or are you a realtor that sells homes? Are you a realtor that does it in a shorter period of time than the average agent in the marketplace? And are you netting me more money and making me more money and putting more money in my pocket than the other agent in the community in that? So here's Dan's stats. In 2022, he sold 100% of asking on average for his listings. The average in the Vernon area was 95.4%. So Dan is netting 4.6% more than the average agent in, in Vernon. Is that a good stat for a listing presentation? Yes or no? The other thing I'll do, guys, is I'll tell Dan to do one more thing further here with this statistic. Take that 4.6%, multiply it by the average price, and figure out how many dollars that is for a person living in Vernon. And I can tell you that 4.6% is probably tens of thousands of dollars he's netting more than any agent in his community, okay? Next strategic plan we have here is Dan sells in 32 days, average agent in Vernon, 55. Great stat. He sold every listing last year he took, none of it expired, which is good for him, right? But 57% of the, of, the, of the listings expired with agents in the marketplace in that particular area. Now, your expiry stats are skewed because you guys are playing the little trick that you're canceling them and then relisting them and this and that. I get that. But at the end of the day, would you agree, show of hands, are these good numbers to go in for a listing presentation to tell people why you versus anyone else in your local area? Yes or no? Crickets. I'll assume yes. <laughs> All right. So for those veterans in the room now, wait, if I don't have these stats for the first year, then use your brokerage stats. So my newbies in my brokerage guys, they're using company stats, company versus company stats and using their stats until they get their own stats. If you've been like six months in the business and you've taken one listing and it's sold and it's sold for well and this and that, then use those statistics. But if asked how many sales you have or that, tell them the truth. But at the end of the day, you still have stats. Okay. So at the end of the day, these are the reasons why you study the market, why you study the business and that for strategic own business. And you also study what your own business is doing so you can see why you, why your marketing plan and why now, right? And you have to have the numbers. Don't tell me, show me and sell me, write this down. Don't tell me, show me the numbers, show me the statistics, show me the visual and substantiate what you're telling me because you're a salesperson and talk is cheap. Okay, so validate it with statistic, logical numbers and graphs and visuals and things like that every time you're in the marketplace. Any questions on vision? Any questions on living above the line? Any questions on studying the market numbers? Any questions on studying your own business numbers and knowing your numbers versus your competitors' numbers in the regions? We're good? Okay, next one. Next part is that I'm going to ask you guys to take this thing. You're going to see in your booklet here, there's a sheet of what we call your core values. And Chad, what you're going to get the group to do is take and, and they're going to have to spend time over the next week or two here, guys, and figure out core values are basically your philosophical beliefs and ideas of what you believe to be true and how you do business and how you live your life. Okay. And Wade, you're like, 
what are we doing a core values exercise for? Give me a minute and I'll tell you why we're doing a core values exercise. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can differentiate. How many people would like to find something that they could differentiate themselves from every other realtor in Red Deer right now? Okay, guys, this is it. You having core values and you having a purpose and a vision statement sets yourself apart from anybody. Can anybody tell me that in their listing presentation, pre-buyer, pre-seller package, anything in their marketing plan and that, is there anybody in the room that has their core values, has their mission statement, has their purpose statement all integrated into their marketing? Anybody in the room do that and have that? Perfect. That's why you do it. So all your core values are going to be different than anybody else's in this room. So you're going to pick five, and you can go up to nine or so up to that just from this list and choose what your core values are. So there's commitment, forgiveness, caring, challenge, order, power, health, love, uh, nurturing, self-esteem, rationality, generosity, comfort, purpose, moderation, focus. All of these different core values are going to identify you and who you are to the core. No pun intended. Then you're going to design a mission statement and a purpose statement. OK, so a mission statement is the big picture. It's what you provide and what you do on a big, on a, on, a, on a macro level, right? And then your purpose statement is what you do on a micro level. So let me just give you an example of, of a core values, mission, and purpose statement that you can integrate into your marketing strategies, guys. So let me just show you an example of ours. So Chad, this is something that we had Cyrus build for us last year in 2022. And basically, when you create your mission, purpose, and your core values, folks, this is what you do. How impressive is this if this was in your pre-buyer or pre-seller package or on your website, or if this was in your marketing material, your listing presentation, that. And, and why I built this visual and why I did this is because I don't want to tell you, I want to show you and sell you because that's what I do. So here are the, the core values of our organization, honesty, integrity, knowledge, service, results, professional respect, and passion. Here is our mission statement. We're a magnetic organization consisting of accomplished team, blah, blah, blah. And then our purpose statement is to help real estate professionals build inspiring, meaningful, and profitable businesses to support their lives and dreams. Okay, so I have my mission statement, my big macro, my core values, and my purpose. And when I share that or someone reads that and sees that, it connects them. It pulls them in. It's a pull piece, not a push piece. Would you agree that... People are probably a little sick of ego and push marketing, and they're looking for a little bit more of authenticity, transparency, and pull, pull marketing, guys. This is pulling, not pushing. Stop pushing and start pulling. And watch what happens with your attraction for your clientele base. The other thing, too, is, is when I share this with an agent coming to work for our team and our, our, for our organization, they'll be like, yeah, I couldn't agree more. That resonates with me and how I believe and how I do things and what I believe in that. Then I know that they're part of the right team. This is a great litmus test for you guys and your clients to just see if they're the right culture, the right client, the right fit for you and your business. Because I'll remind you all that one reason why you got into this business is because you have the choice to choose who you work with. You don't need to deal with every jackass and stranger. You can send them packing because you have a choice. My favorite listing presentation, six minutes. Six minute listing presentation, okay? Sat down, just the silent assassin started kicking in and this elderly lady is actually dictating what I'm going to do and what price I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. And I just got this really bad feeling. And I just said to her, I put my pen down and folded my book and folded all my material up. And I just said, thank you so much. And I stood up and I said, I'm, I'm going to leave now. And she's like, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going to take a pass. I'm not the right fit. I'm not the right person for this job and that. And I'm going to excuse myself and thank you for your time. I'm driving along and, I'm, and I've left the listing presentation after six minutes and the silent assassin calls. You know who the silent assassin was? It was her son, who's a real estate agent from Nanai, or from the Vancouver, sorry, and phones me up and says, who do you think you are? And I said, oh, hi, hello to you too. And he says, and he's just going off and on and on about not work, staying with my mom and not taking the listing and blah, 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 and this and that, and we'll decide what you do and who to do it and that. And I just paused and I said, you know what? Thanks so much. And then he got even more mad because I thanked him. He was even more pissed off. And I said, thank you for calling and thank you for confirming me made the right decision not to work with you or your mom. Have a great day, right? Take it around. How many people would love to do that, right? How freeing is that to be able to just say to people, you know what? I don't need your jackassery. I don't need your business. I don't need that. I want to work with people that I actually connect and actually can work with. Make sense? 
So here's a great differentiator for you guys to use this type of visual, but also a litmus test on basically attracting the right clientele and the right philosophical idea clientele and being able to move forward in that. So that's another thing that you guys can take the time to build in your arsenal and build in your resources as well. Okay. Any questions about that tool? How many people like the idea of being able to create their own differentiating marketing piece in that and being able to use it into their marketing in that? So add that into your website, into your business cards. Uh, Chad, do you know Pierre Deverand's in Ottawa? Pierre that owns the Ottawa office? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Pierre, guys, the, a good broker friend of ours, he uses all his core values. All his core values are actually on his office awning. They're in his ads. They're in his business card and that. And that's his way of differentiating his company and his office from every other player in Ottawa. And they do incredibly, incredibly well in Ottawa, basically using that as a marketing piece and a differentiator because no disrespect, most agents marketing and all of that is all the same, or it looks a little vanilla or it looks all the same in that. So if you're looking for something different, there it is. Mission, purpose, and core values and creating a marketing visual, set yourself apart and attracts the right clientele. Next item for your business guys, is to create the ideal schedule. So basically, I believe that most agents can't time manage because they don't know how to create the perfect schedule. So one of the tasks that I'll get you guys to do in the next couple of weeks here is to create the perfect week. What is the perfect schedule and the perfect week for you personally, professionally, everything that is allowing you the ideal business and the ideal personal week in that and create that visual? Would you agree, ha show of hands, you can't have a perfect week in a scheduled week if you haven't created it and haven't visualized it and haven't seen it. Would you agree? Okay, so some of us are morning persons, some of us are evening persons, it doesn't matter. You create your, your schedule around when you're at your best and you look at it and you allow the time and you allow the scheduling. The first thing first in Wade's schedule every year is the fun things with the fun people, just so we're clear. That goes in, that's my big rocks, my big rocks go into my jar first. Then all the other stuff that's going to finance that and allow that to happen goes in after the sand, the water, all the pebbles, all that stuff goes in. My big rocks, what I'm doing and who I'm doing with all go in first in my calendar and in my schedule. And then everything else goes around that. And I'm a firm believer that my work dictates my what I want to do and what I want to experience is I'm going to go figure out how to make it happen and how to finance it and how to make that work. Okay, that's how I, I reverse engineer how most people live. I just live it and figure out how to finance it, okay? Most people can't do anything and they're stuck because they just can't get their why and they're like, well, they don't believe that they can do that so they don't ever schedule it and figure out how to do it, if that makes sense, okay? So create that ideal perfect week personally and professionally and put that into play first and create that perfect balance of and put in the good stuff, like the, the most important people yourself in your calendar first and then build everything else around it that's going to allow that to happen. Next article here, the next day. How many of you guys have a marketing schedule like you'll see here of this example? Okay. So what this is, is the example of an agent's marketing plan and what they do. So in January, they have an email that's uh, sent to their database that they send out and they track and measure it. There's another thank you letter for their sphere for supporting their business the past year. There's a farm marketing piece here. There's an open house. There's lead gen and that. How many people schedule who, what, where, when, why, and how and track and measure like you see here, this example on this marketing scheduling here? Would it make sense that you'd want to build stuff in that and want to build a schedule and have a plan and have a plan of attack? Yes or no? Thumbs up? Yes. Right? So, guys, this is an example of a, of a, a quarter, three-month schedule of what an agent's putting into their marketing plan and what they're doing and why they're doing it and who they're doing it and tracking, measuring. Can everybody understand the importance of tracking and measuring? Why do you track and measure everything? Did everybody know that real estate is all math? Anybody know that? It's all math. It's all math. It's all numbers. It's all it's all data, numbers, and math. So you're calculating all the numbers and that, and you're tracking and measuring everything and that, and you're looking at it. Because if you don't track and measure, then you don't really have a clear idea of what's working and what's not working and what to double down on and what to stop doing and what's not, right? And stop it and then shifting and, 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 and addressing it and that. And so tracking and measuring and looking at it and discovering what I need to do and what I'm not doing and what I am doing and what's working, what's not working and have a plan of who, what, where, when, why, and how and track and measure it and put that into play. And here's an example of a sample marketing plan that you guys can put into play 
each and every month. Okay. My favorite thing coming up, Chad, is uh, is the uh, Popeye with sending everyone, and everybody can do this in the room. Send all your clients scratch you in tickets for St. Patty's Day, guys. There's a t- And I'll send you this tag, Chad. There's a tag I've got. Is clients like you are like a four-leaf clover, hard to find and lucky to have. And then you staple a, four, a scratch and win ticket to it and add value and put in and, and, and be top of mind in that. My favorite thing to do in March for my clients and for a database touch. And in April, guys, you can buy little packs of seeds called forget-me-nots. And then you can send another tag, Chad, that says, thanks for helping my business grow and staple that tag to those seeds and send them out there. My coaching clients get more response from a scratch and win ticket in that little tag and that seeds package and helping their business grow than you can shake a stick at, guys, because you're adding value, you're showing up just because, and you're making people feel good. And when you make people feel good, they want to make you feel good in return in that. And that's how it works. And that's an example of two of my favorite things in March and April to do in my sample marketing plan and in my schedule for most of my coaching clients. Next one, guys. You can't set an income goal without knowing what your personal nut costs and what your business nut costs. Write this down. Here's your, here's your, here's your financial 101 real estate. My personal expenses for the year plus my business expenses for the year plus my profit. Yes, the word profit equals my annual income goal. I will repeat that. I need to know what my personal expenses are monthly and annually plus my business expenses monthly and annually, plus my percentage of profit that I want to make to be able to know what my annual business income goal is. Do you know how many agents I coach that their business nut and their personal nut are higher than their income goal? We don't even have enough to even put profit in there. So you have to look at it and say, I need to set my income goal higher or I got to stop spending. Oh, wait, you didn't say stop spending, did you? Did you say stop spending? I can't do that. I can't buy that. No, you can't if you don't have the money in that. So build it. So I know this sounds incredibly boring and stupid, guys. The best thing my dad taught me when I started my first eight years was this. Figure out what my minimum nut is for expenditures business-wise and personal-wise and write myself a check every two weeks for those for those expenses. Did you hear what I said? Write yourself a check for every two weeks for those expenses and bring home a check. I never had a fight with my wife for all the years I've been in real estate for 29 years because I brought home a check every two weeks and I still pay myself every two weeks. I leave all the money into the business and into the business account and I write a check for my personal nut and my business nut every two weeks and I've done it for 29 years. Then at the end of the year, every time I have excess money in that in the business, the business has the money, then I'll bonus or then I'll do stuff or whatever else in that and that and financial management and learning that I, I I thought at the time when my dad and I were doing well in 97, I'm like, dude, like look at all the money in the business. And he's like, nope, we pay ourselves the same. So I, it was the same few thousand bucks a month. It was the same expenses and that, and we kept it consistent. And the business just kept building wealth and building growth in the business. And there were times where we'd take out bonuses and things like that. How many of us need to treat our business like business owners and create a financial strategy like a business owner instead of waiting for the next commission checks to come in every three, six, nine weeks and that, or nine months for some of us. And that and having our spouses say, hey, how's that pro bono job that you're doing in that? Any chance we're going to see any money coming home this month there, babe? How you doing there working for free and going to that office every day, right? So... I had to get, and I'll tell you how I did it. I went and got a business line of credit, guys. True story, not as as embarrassing as my 2004 story when I was too fat and having a heart attack and dying. My wife was leaving me. I was I had such bad credit, Chad, when I was in university that I had to get my parents assigned for a business line of credit that I had to tap into. And I drew from the business line, guys. My first year, I lived off my business line in real estate. My second year, I broke even and paid off that line and, and, and covered the bills. My third year, six figures and never looked back, right? And by 2004, you're, you're doing chairmans and you're doing a million dollars, right? And, and, and you know my story and what I had to sacrifice to do a million bucks, okay? And would I do a million bucks a year in this business? Yes, but I would have other team members doing the business and working it that way. And I, if I was doing it differently, that's what I would do. I'd have myself a team and I'd still be netting a million bucks and, and being able to lead a team and doing that if I was working and selling today. Guaranteed, that's how I do it. And I have the ability to run it expense-wise and have it all the business and the financial side in check. And we'll go that into detail and in more detail in other sessions. But 
expense management, finance management, and income and expenses, that it's incredibly important. You have to, that's why real estate's so tough. You have to be the CEO. You have to be the COO, the CFO, right? The, the marketing guy and that and gal. It's, it's not an easy business and it's not for the faint of heart, for sure. All right, guys. So that's your business plan. You've got your expense management, your CFO. You've got your marketing and your CEO, right? You've got your scheduling and your and your uh, your timing and scheduling. You've got your mission, your vision statement, your core values, your, your business plan. You know what you're doing and what you're good at and what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. You're going to know your numbers. You're going to go the market's numbers, right? And you've got vision and clarity and you know what gives you joy and you're reminding yourself of it every day, why you get out and what vehicle real estate is providing for you to live the life you want to live. And you know how to manage the ups and downs and getting stuck and unstuck and being able to do that. And you figured out that the key to everything is living above the line is implementation and execution, getting stuff done and taking ownership and asking what I'm going to do different, what I'm going to do next. And, and what did I learn? What did I learn from that? It's an opportunity. Okay. Any questions from that planning stuff? Show of hands. Was there some stuff in there that you guys could implement and execute and put into your businesses moving forward in the next week or so? Yes or no? Show of hands. Yes. Everybody's got it all done. They're perfect in that. Okay. All right, guys. I want to show you one tool. One tool. Any questions before I go on to this tool? We're good? All right. So I'm going to show you a tool that I'm going to share with you guys. It's a call the Top Town Town Planning Tool. And I, what I want to share with you guys is that is there somebody in the room that wants to come up by the camera and I'll do their top town planning for them and I'll break their business down into three simple mathematical numbers for them? Anybody want to be my guinea pig and walk up to the camera and uh, walk up to the screen and do this with me? You're going to get your business plan and you're going to get your done for free here if you want to do it. Not everybody at once, please. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll do it. All right, thank you. Your first name? Rochelle. Rochelle, thank you so much, Rochelle. Okay, Rochelle, Hi. what we're going to do is we're going to break your business down into three mathematical numbers, okay? You ready for that? Nope, maybe. Okay, so what's your income goal for this year, please? What would you like to set for an income goal for yourself? Oh, God. I'd be happy with even 100000 How much, sorry? 100000 100000 perfect. How lucky is that? I guessed it and already filled it out at 100000 Weird, huh? All right. I guess I've done this before. All right, so a hundred grand. Now, Rochelle, what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into three simple mathematic numbers for it. Before we do that, I want to just basically just fill in a couple more things. So all you guys have to do when you get this tool and you get this tool in your hands is pull, put the numbers in for the green numbers. So put your name here where Robert Roberto, Realtor Roberto is. Put your calendar year in there and it'll all be set for you there. The hundred grand went in there in the green box. Now, would you what percentage of your business would you like with sellers and what percentage would and listings and what percentage would you like with buyers Rochelle um well I would say maybe 75 percent listing and the rest buying. okay realistically yeah. realistically do you have a good sphere and you're doing a lot of sellers and doing a lot of listings this is my first year so okay so in your first year guys and thank you for being honest in your first years Ideally, your business is going to be easier to find buyers, but I'd like it to be seller heavy. So I'm going to say that we're going to probably realistically say that if you have an, do you have a big sphere and you know a lot of people in Red Deer? It's decent. Decent? Okay. So then let's just, I'm going to go 60 on the buy side and 40 on the list side. Okay. Just to be a little bit realistic. Okay. Not that, I'm, not that I'm wishing that on you guys, because I'd like to see Rochelle and anybody in the room get to 60 on the listing side and 40 on the buy side. Does that make sense, everybody? Ideally, that's where you want to be. Most first years, though, without a database or without a sphere, generally do like 75 buy and 25 sell list side and that. But we're going 60, 40, 60 buyers, 40%. Then you're going to say, what percentage of listings are selling in Red Deer right now? If you get a listing and it's priced right, what percentage is selling? What would the listings taken versus listings sold percentage be, Chad? Uh, I would say almost everything is selling. Low is going to if it's priced right, it's gone tomorrow. Yeah, so what's the what's the expiry rate? Does anybody know what the expiry rate is right now? I would say almost yeah, even in the good days in Kelowna, it never got any higher than like 78%. Eh? There was still about 20, 22% of real estate listings not selling. But with, 
Yeah. So let's just assume that 90% of your listings are going to take are going to sell and maybe one may not. Okay, let's go 90%. And also let's just take in the fact that you may not want their listing or may not want them as a client in that. So we're going to go the sold percentage will go 90%. And then for a newer person, a newer agent on a listing presentation, I'm going to say, you know, 70% of your listings, you're going to win and 30% you may lose. And we'll just go with those numbers. Okay. And then Rochelle, buyers that buy and buyers that lie and die, I'm going to probably say that most people in the room here, the buyer ratio is usually around 50-50 because you can't find inventory, you can't sell them something or, or they or they phase off or whatever on that. So just check that, check that statistic. But we got 40% of her business listings, 60% of her business buyers. We're going to do 90% of her listings will sell, 70% of her listing appointments she'll get, 50% of her buyers will buy. And then Chad, what's the average dollar GCI per deal in that uh, in your marketplace in Red Deer per sale? You guys muted by accident there. Or Chantel or Carrie or anybody else on the call? Anybody know what the average dollar amount is per deal? There, you can hear us now? You can do, yeah. What would be your average right. dollar GCI per sale per end? Uh, 6,000, let's go. Six away. grand? Okay, we got 6,000 bucks. And then the most important question for Rochelle is, Rochelle, how many weeks holidays are you taking this year? <laughs> Did you say two? Good, good answer. Okay, everybody should take two minimum, minimum, right? For that. Okay, so here are Rochelle's numbers, guys, for 100 grand. And you'll look at this. So, Rochelle, you need 31 appointments, okay? 31 appointments to make 100 grand in the next 12 months. 31 appointments, okay? So, that is like, that is like an appointment every two weeks. If you look at the number here, 0.6, it's about an appointment with a bona fide buyer, a bona fide seller every two weeks. Does that sound doable to you? That sounds very doable. Okay, so you got a listing presentation or a buyer pres to sign up a listing or a buyer to an EBA every two weeks. You got to have a presentation, okay? You got to have an appointment face to face, okay? Now the statistics sell, and you can write this down, guys. The statistics say that to get an appointment, a pro in the room. If you're a veteran pro, you're talking to 25 people, and you'll end up with an appointment. If you're the average agent in the room. 50 conversations with 50 people, you get an appointment. The average rookie, 75 to 100 people conversations, and you get an appointment. Rochelle, where would you think your appointment conversion is with conversations for people to getting an appointment? Where would you see yourself at? 25, well, 50, 75, 100? If I'm being realistic, then it's probably going to be close to that in between the 50 and 75. Okay, so how about we choose 60? Okay. okay, so we're going to assume that 60 people, 60 people she talks to, she's got 31 appointments, so 60 times 31 appointments, she's got to talk to 1,860 people this year, the next 12 months. So you're like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. But let's say you work six days a week and you got 50 weeks, you're working 300 days this next 12 months, okay, 300 days. So I take the 1,860 people, Rochelle, and I divide it by the 300 working days. And Rochelle, you got to talk to 6.2 people a day about possibly leading into buying and selling. Does that seem unrealistic? 6.2 people a day. Well, it depends on the day, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So six days a week. That, that's your second number. So your six 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 conversations, six people a day having a conversation with that may possibly lead to a, a listing appointment or a buyer appointment. Six people a day is your first number. Second number is an appointment every two weeks. And your third number is 17 transactions divided by 12 months. Your second number is one and a half deals or 1.4 deals a month. So I've broken down a $100,000 business plan into six people a day, one appointment every two weeks, and one and a half transactions a month. That's your 100K plan right there, those three mathematical numbers. Does that sound doable to you, girl, at 100 grand? Yes. All right. There's your numbers. So now you take those numbers and you put them wherever you need to put them to remind you every day. Six people a day, six people a day. Or put six 
so put uh, six business cards and hand business cards out and don't go home until you've handed out those business cards and don't go home until you've had six conversations with people. So six people a day, one appointment, belly to belly, face to face with a buyer or seller, legit buyer or seller, and a deal and a half a month and you're at 100K. Okay, guys, it's easy. Three simple mathematical numbers. What I also want to show you guys is this is a tracker for you all. So this will track how many people are Fitbit nuts. So this will track your, your as you're putting in your transactions and your things like that, it'll start tracking your percentage of your goals and track as you're hitting your goals. You can put in your sales and your buyers and listing sales and your numbers for each quarter. It'll track where the business came from. It'll track your appointments and your appointment rates and that. So this is a great little tracker and a great little tool that you guys can basically just, if you're a gamer, if you're a person that likes fit bidding or tracking or seeing your progress and counting your steps and that, this is your step counter for real estate right here, but it all starts with knowing what your three mathematical numbers. So I'll repeat, there, you just fill in the green numbers here based on your numbers and then figure out your total appointments is the number in red. And if you're a uh, pro, it's 25 people conversations to one, 50 to one if you're a regular average agent or 75 to one to 100 to one if you're a, if you're a rookie, okay? And you work on those numbers and base those numbers and break your business down into three manageable, easier, tangible numbers, 100 grand is six, one every two weeks, one and a half deals, six, one appointment every two weeks, right? And one and a half transactions, I'm at 100 grand, 100 grand, 100 grand, and everything else, you remind yourself of that every day, who am I talking to? Who am I seeing? Who am I have my dialogue? Because I need my appointment every two weeks, because I need my deal and a half every month, because I need my 100 grand. And then more importantly, Rochelle, if you made that money, what would be the thing that what would be the thing that you'd want to do with that money the most more than anything? What would it be? One thing, if you don't mind sharing with the group. I actually paid off some of my debt. Perfect. Debt. So what would be the reason behind paying off the school debt? What would that do for you, please? Uh, it would free up a lot of other money to go traveling and do things with my family. Exactly. And where do you want to travel and who do you want to travel with, girl? uh all over sky's the limit when it comes to that awesome so your, your, your collage is going to be your debt and your travel and your people and that you want to do in that and that reminds you of why you need your hundred grand it's not the hundred grand it's what the hundred grand allows you to do if that makes sense and it's more importantly guys what that hundred grand will make you feel how it'll make you feel how would it make you feel if you could travel with your loved ones and do whatever you want and be able to afford that and do that how would that make you feel? It feels amazing. Exactly. And that's what you signed up for real estate for is because you want to feel amazing. Right? And that's the gift. All right, guys. So wrap up week number one. Here's your homework. Yes, homework. So you're going to email myself or, and, and you're going to email me every day. So here's my email address, guys. Each, each every session, you're going to email me. My email is this, Wade Webb, W-E-B-B, -B, Wade Webb at royalapage.ca. And before each session, you're going to send me your homework or you're going to send me your stuff. So assignment number one, answer the unstuck questions on the first slide. Answer the questions truthfully and honestly on the unstuck questions on slide one. Slide number two, create a vision board. Create your vision. Create this little nugget right here. Create something like that. There's actually apps and there's actually tools that you can Google that will actually do it for you. Pretty cool. Uh, complete the market study and your business study. Complete your market study and your business study. And you can just use the template that I use for Nanaimo and just put Red Deer and change the numbers and change the slide deck, okay? You can just do that. And identify your five to six core values and create your core values and your mission statement and your purpose statement, okay? Start with a 20 to, well, start with a one or two month marketing plan like you saw in there on the example there. Look at your, know what your minimum nut is personally, what your minimum nut is professionally, okay? And break down your three numbers using that top-down planner and know your people a day, know your appointments a week, and know your deals per month for your goal and for your GCI. And I can tell you this, this is the secret sauce in that. Go figure out how to get a listing. Because if there's a market where there's no listings, like everywhere in North America, you get a listing, you're getting closer to your goal guaranteed. You, you can almost hear the cash register in the background go cha ching when you sign up the listing, can't you? You can almost hear that, okay? So those are your action steps. Those are your plans for the first week and the first session in that, guys. 
uh, welcome to uh, the program. Welcome to the next nine weeks of changing your guys' businesses and changing your guys' lives. Are there any questions, any comments, any questions, or anything I can go through before we wrap up for today? Anybody got anything? We're good? Um, you said to email you every day. Why yeah. is that? Well, no, you can, you can email me every just before every session. My apologies. Yeah, you can, you. you can email me every day if you want to. It's not, it's not a dating app. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Any other? And, and guys, feel free to reach out and ask any questions or anything you want, tips or nuggets and that anytime during the program. I'm, I'm available. I'll get back to your answers. I'll get back to your questions. I'll get back to your emails. I'm an open book. No problem. No problem. Nothing's a secret. <laughs>